Yo, what's good? It's Josh. Welcome to the channel. What's up, people? Welcome to today's tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about my guy, Breakins. This guy's music is so good. The way he just does his little fall set. And then, Fuck, boy, I want to beam. Everything is fire. That being said, I'm going to break everything down as simply as possible in hopes that you might even use one of these tips to help become the next Breakins. Let's get right into it. For today's tutorial, we're going to be using this little idea I put together. The first thing I want to go over for break-ins type beats is loop manipulation. Here's the original loop that we had. It was just a guitar loop that I found on the internet. I think a Z Beats pack right here. Great sounding loop from the get go. I just EQ'd it a little bit, threw OTT on it. The first thing I noticed that he does is frequency shifting. No matter what DAW you're in, there should be a frequency shifting plugin. If not, you should be able to pretty easily find one online that'll help you do this. So for instance, if you're in Ableton, I would just put on the frequency shifter and mess with the fine knob, show automation, and then just mess with it. It's kind of similar to what Metro Boomin would do in future type beats, but he does it with these almost like indie folk kind of Midwest sounding guitars, and it's super sick. You don't have to go crazy with it. Some of his stuff kind of flows in and out of tune, and so you can just even do it slightly at times and then like larger at others if you want that effect. Making it to the hook, the next thing you can do is chopping the samples. I'm gonna play what I did, and then I'm gonna kind of break down what's happening. All that's happening here is I just took the Z Beats loop and then chopped up certain pieces of it. You could take a little bit like that. So just like that, and then take that next part. If you wanted to make it a little bit cleaner, just apply fades. Then I would also mess with reversing and pitching up. So you could do. That's just me chopping up the loop and pitching it. Just to give you a kind of starting place for this, I would focus on things like pitching, chopping, reversing, and adding reverb or any other effects to certain parts of the loop. This is an easy way to make your loops more experimental sounding and just more unique. If you do all these things, it's gonna really take your loop game up to the next level. The next thing I wanna go into are the vocals. I have Waves Tune, got some distortion uh, that I think adds some really nice character, a little OTT and a gate. And the gate is just to, for some noise. All right, some ODEQ going on, compression, and then some more distortion. If you don't already have it, this Temper plugin is dope. The crucial thing that Breakins does is stacking and layering vocals. I know he's talked about this in a lot of reddits and AMAs. He loves panning certain parts of the vocal to get a really nice big wide sound. You would put your lead vocal in the center and then you'd stack that a couple times, do one left, one right, and here's what that sounds like. Something else he also does is use the falsetto voice. And so if you don't know what this is, you have your kind of main singing voice and then you have that kind of like, you know, that usher, like smooth, like... All of that is your falsetto voice. They all stack together to make it sound really big and nice. Then have some reverb. A lot of times he doesn't have a whole lot of reverb. So I just put a small room. I didn't want to go with a large plate or hall or anything. Then got a little delay going on. I wanted that to just kind of provide some ambience. So I got a quarter for anyone who doesn't know, you just kind of use this filter, take out some of the highs, some of the lows, added a little bit of reverb. Also had then a little bit of slap delay just to add a little bit of widening effect and just to give it a little bit more dimension in the context of the track. <laughs> As you can see, this creates this wall of vocal sound. Breakins is really smart about this. And so sometimes he'll have the single vocal in the middle and then on select words and phrases, he'll do doubles going left and right, maybe even in that falsetto voice that we talked about to really emphasis and add dimension to his tracks. Next thing I wanna go over is the 808. Something I noticed about Breakins is his 808s are always so hard. So I don't know exactly what Breakins does, but here are a couple tips that I think you can get really close and get some really dope results. First thing is just sound selection. If you have splice, I would really recommend in the Umru kit. If not, I would just go find some free kits, even like the Metro Booming kits, the Spins 808, all those. A lot of those are really hard and can be dope, especially if you add some distortion and stuff to it. This one already has some distortion. That's what I was using. This first little trick I actually got from Aries. I think at a Reddit AMA, he a lot of the times will include a octave up 808. What you would do for that is just copy your pattern, your 808, and then pitch it up 12. It's exactly what I did here. What this does is just make it slap on phone speakers and really just cut through because it adds all that low mid harmonic content. What I would do here is just EQ out the low end because we don't want it to interfere with this sub E bass down here. And then I used temper. As you can kind of see, it sounds kind of dull and boring. 
Then we just put that on and it just, as you can see, it just fattens it up so much. And so that's something I would highly recommend. Something that's really cool to mess with on vocals are little effects like this. <laughs> So all I did right there was automate reverb for just that one little part. I went here, automated that, and then here's where the real magic happens. So I went to the reverb, I put OTT on it, auto pan is what's causing that little, that all that movement. I automated the rate. So it'd go fast, like duh, 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 and then slow down. And then I put another OTT on it because, you know, OTT just makes everything sound better. That's something you can mess with if there's like a space in the beat or it's just a way to create a dope moment. Moving on to the drums. What I like to do when I'm making these kind of beats is just throw out all kind of like conventional things of rhythm and kind of just be more experimental. You know, instead of the typical hi-hat pattern that's just like t -t 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 -t, do something different. And that's what I did here. <laughs> Layered it with a kick, kind of stompy. Really like a stomp kind of sound because I just liked it. I thought it gave it like a lot of punch and weight. Then also have that like little punchy kick. Basically every other measure. Also have some little effects here. Final sound. I just took that stomp sound, reversed it right there. Little reverse vocal. Something else he likes to do a lot is use non-traditional snare sounds like rims or EDM-y type snares. That's what I tried to do in the verse a little bit. So that's something cool to mess with is just having unique sound selection. So that's all for today, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned anything today, make sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe button. I'm really trying to get to 100 subscribers. Hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's week. Y'all keep killing it and make some dope music. See y'all next time. Love you.